Hi, welcome to Basic Statistics. Today we are going to review the importance of, of data analysis. Today we know that we are on a world that is, is floated of information. Right now with all this crisis of, of public health, we are seeing a lot of, of data that is coming from all, all, all everywhere, from all the sources. So, we know the percentage of, of uh, people that has dead for coronavirus, people that has been sick, and, and that is statistics. But also statistics come from surveys, come from many different places. And regarding the, the, the world uh, crisis that we have right now is a statistic that only 20% of the people wash their hands after going to the restroom. So we have statistics that enlighten us about the problems that we are facing. Statistics are going to give us facts and statistics are going to give us estimations. So when we have a problem, it's very important to know and understand that if we cannot express this um, problem with numbers, we, run, we don't really know very much about the problem. We must understand, we must understand the statistical concepts to be able to interpret, it, interpret the data that we have, the historical data, to interpret the, the results from the experiments that we do and take effective decisions according to the data that we have. So first we need to know that we, we have two main categories of data and the statistics analysis or the statistic analysis that we do with these uh, two types of data are going to be very different. So first talk about the continuous variables. Continuous variables is everything that has, a, in, in a scale, has a continuous value, such as temperature, such as uh, weight, volume, time, etc. Attributes, in the other hand, is going to be data that um, comes from a category, not category, it comes from, from a characteristic of the product. So, Pass-fail is the most common uh, type of attribute, but also uh, if we assign some category like the, the, in, in the marketing, the stars, like one star, two star in the, in the surveys, or good, uh, fairly good, uh, bad, fairly bad, are categories and are going to be attributes as well. So we need to know four basic concepts when we are um, making a basic, basic analysis of statistics. So first is going to be the central tendency, second is going to be the variation, third is going to be the distribution, and finally we are going to talk about the sample and population. So let's start with number one, uh, central tendency. So uh, I, I love this example because uh, it gives us a clear idea of um, the, the importance of measuring uh, the, or the difference of measuring attributes and variables or continuous variables. We have a pilot A and we have a pilot, pilot B. Every letter that we see in the screen is going to be one landing of uh, this uh, plane or this pilot. So, pilot A has a wide uh, range is spread all over the, the track, but pilot B is very consistent if we are measuring with continuous data. But if we are measuring with attribute, but of them has 100% of the data. That is a problem because uh, we cannot make the difference or we cannot uh, see the difference between pilot A and pilot B if we are measuring attributes. 
That's why we require a larger sample size when we are talking or making analysis uh, of attributes or attribute data. So we say that we are going to talk about the central tendency. Central tendency is uh, the most uh, no, uh, known uh, value or parameter is the mean. Mean is going to be the sum of all values divided between the number of occurrences. So is as we said, is a ten central tendency and one that is less um, common but uh, is also a, uh, a central element is going to be the median. The median we sort from from the lowest to the highest value the the data and we are going to select as the median the uh, the one that is in the 50 percent right in the middle so is where the 50 percent of the data is hold or or happen and the the good good point on the median is that it's not affected by extreme values okay measurements of variation uh, remember always that when we calculate the mean or the average or a central tendency we always needs to uh, go along with the variation. This uh, measurement, if we just measure uh, the average or the mean, it can be uh, incomplete information. So I can say um, that one uh, vacation spot has a, a fabulous uh, mean temperature of 23 centigrade but in reality it's very extreme in the summer and very extreme in the winter so always we need to measure mean with a variation and, and give let, let's see this example we saw the pilot A that has a large variation pilot B that has a smaller variation so if we just express the mean are going to be the same but with the variation is going to be very different so, the variation parameters, same, there are many, but the most common use or commonly used are going to be the range and the standard deviation. The range is very easy, maximum value minus minimum value, there is no big deal, take the value of the highest, take the value of the lowest, and that is the distance, but a standard deviation that uh, is, is the most largely uh, measurement used to measure variation or to identify variation in, in a set of data. The, the uh, standard deviation is the, is, is the root cause of the variance. But what is the variance? Well, if we uh, have a set of data and we have the average, the distance of each point uh, to, the, to the average we are going to take each one of these um, distance and each one of these we are going to elevate to the to the square and and we are going to take the average of, of that square of distance from each point to the mean so uh, that is the variance and when we calculate the variance let's do what well, we do the the root the square root and we get the standard deviation. The standard deviation is, is very important because it comes uh, is, is the base to the uh, distribution or the probability distribution. So in the probability distribution we have our data and, and when we measure one value and we measure again, we are making this uh, pile up of the data and, and uh, make a graphic, an histogram of the occurrences. So uh, we are going to calculate the mean, the average, and we are going to calculate the standard deviation. And most of the time are going to come to a bell-shaped form. And this bell-shaped form is going to be called the normal distribution. 
Normal distribution has a, a mean in the center, but has the characteristics that with uh, if you add the distance of three sigma and subtract the distance of three sigma, you are going to have 99.73% of the data. So with the mean and the standard deviation calculation, uh, you are going to be able to, to know where are going to be most of, of your data on that uh, population. So it's, it's, it's very interesting, it's, it's very important because it's the base of many, many um, good tools like uh, capability analysis or uh, any ANOVAs, uh, DOEs, etc. Even the um, SPC charts are based on the calculation of standard deviation. Okay, let's so go and move for a sample. Sample is going to be a representation of the population. So we have a large uh, elements or, or subjects that we want to study, but we cannot study all of them. So since I cannot study all of them, what I'm going to take is pull out uh, some of these elements and uh, I'm going to measure and I'm going to evaluate and I'm going to make a conclusion. And these conclusions I'm going as to assume that are valid to the uh, entire population. So I have to do um, a sample because of the cost, because of the time, and cost of the uh, cost of, of factibility. That means that maybe it's very expensive to measure all of the items in the population. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't have the time, or sometimes it's not possible, like uh, in destructive testing. I cannot uh, measure all of them because I'm going to destroy all the elements on the population. Remember, one of the main characteristics of the sample is that this sample needs to be random and needs to be representative of the population. So, uh, sample, well, one of the best examples that I hear is that you have or you're preparing a soup and you don't eat all the soup to evaluate. So, you take a sample and with, with this uh, spoon that you take out of the soup, you're going to take decisions, you're going to modify the soup or you're going to say, okay, it's good to, to be released to the, to the guest. Okay, um, with uh, Minitab, that is the software that is more, most widely used for statistics, and by the way, it's a pretty cool tool, easy to use, uh, we are going to be able to perform a very complete basic statistics analysis. How we do that? Go to Stat menu, basic statistics, and graphical summary. So uh, here you are going to see a window where you are going to have all, all the, the data that you have in your columns. Select the column that you want to study. Say, uh, hit OK. And what you are going to see here is a chart that is the histogram, but also a chart that um, has um, in, in, in one side a lot of values. So uh, one of the first uh, values that we are going to see in these basic statistics is if it's normal or not normal. So if in the Anderson-Darling um, normality test is above 0.05, it's going to be normal. Later, or if we go down, we are going to have the mean, we are going to have the standard deviation, and we are going to have a lot of, of data. We have also the, the variance, we have the median, and at the end, we have uh, confidence intervals. These confident, confidence intervals, we are going to have a video in the near future, and uh, we are going to explain how to calculate. But uh, just to give you an idea, uh, since we are doing a sample, uh, the confidence interval is going to be 
the range where the true value is going to be. So we calculate a maximum uh, or one extreme of the confidence interval. We calculate the other extreme. So the true value of the population is going to be between these uh, parameters or these values. So it's very, very complete analysis in right in three clicks. You have a very nice analysis of your sample of your historical data, whatever uh, you want to analyze. And uh, it's a good starting point to taking decisions. So today we learned about the basic statistics, the central tendency, variation, distribution, and sample population, plus how to do it in mini tab. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of, of the videos that we have for you.